It is difficult to win at Syracuse. Head football coaches, though, are paid millions upon millions of dollars to do difficult things, and Dino Babers just could not get it done. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you stopping by. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. Dino Babers, 41-55 and 55 at Syracuse. Could not even come close to winning 50% of his games. And obviously, considering four non-conference games per season that are mostly cupcakes, it was a dismal performance out of Dino Babers. 20 wins, 45 losses in ACC play. Again, dismal. So he was given more than ample time, eight seasons at Syracuse to get the job done. He could not. Had the big splash in 2018 at 10-3, finished in the top 15 in the country, defeated West Virginia in a bowl game. However, upon closer inspection, really uh, feasted on a bad schedule, a bad ACC. And uh, when they went up against uh, high-quality opponents that season, Notre Dame in particular losing by 33 points, that Syracuse football team, just basically based on a senior play, good bounces of the ball, good coaching by Dino Babers, were able to get the job done. What Dino Babers teams are going to be most famously remembered for is scaring the heck out of Clemson on a fairly regular basis. Of course, the upset in 2017 of a Clemson team that eventually was the number one seed in the college football playoff. Just one season later, Trevor Lawrence, 15-0, one of the great all-time teams, and Clemson needed a fourth and six conversion with Chase Bryce at quarterback to fend off the upset bid in Death Valley. And then in Death Valley, just a season ago, meaning in 2022, Syracuse went there at 6-0, and oh, had a two-score lead in the second half. Clemson, of course, would march on to the ACC championship after pulling off the comeback win against the Cuse. So time and time again, pushing Clemson to the brink. But that Syracuse team did rarely show up. Look at these results. I mentioned 6-0 in 2022. That team finished with a bowl loss to Minnesota at 7-6. In fact, Dino Babers' teams could only get to two bowl games in seven seasons. That's atrocious. Almost everybody gets to a bowl game. And with the Syracuse formula, much like other mid-tier teams, especially in the ACC, NC State, you clean up on the cupcakes in the non-conference, you go three and five in the conference, and bam, voila, you're in a bowl game. It's not difficult to do, but Dino Babers could not get it done. Look at these finishes compared to the starts out of the Syracuse football team. 4-0, 6-0, 3-1, 3-2, 4-3, getting off to good starts and sometimes undefeated starts through September into October, and then the closing run, Always deplorable. By all accounts, Dino Babers excelled where it counts the most. The long-lasting legacy of his impact, his positive impact on the players as young men, grooming them into fine, young, productive citizens in this country. He's a class act, an excellent role model, first-rate guy in terms of integrity and character. However, it's big-time college football. you got to win games in 41-55. Two bowl games in seven years will not get it done. The Cuse will make it to a bowl game if they win their final regular season game and get to 6-6, six and six, but Dino Babers will not be around for it. What was he around for? A lot of uh, marginal football for a proud football tradition going back to the 50s and 60s. Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and others on through the 80s and 90s, winning under McPherson and Paul Pasqualoni. This team would consistently finish ranked and had some top 10 finishes there in the 80s and 90s. We all remember it well. Shoot, they finished undefeated in 1987 and tied Auburn in the Sugar Bowl. As recently as Donovan McNabb in the late 90s, going toward the early 2000s, they were playing in Orange Bowl games. But over the last 20, 25 years, it's been dismal at Syracuse. The best that they've been able to do is that 7-8 win mark on occasion and get to a decent bowl game. Speaking of candidates, there would be one right there. Doug Marone, who was at Syracuse for four seasons from 2009 through 12. 125, lost 25. Sounds like a Syracuse football coach, but he's coached at Jacksonville, and he is a candidate for the job. Here are some others that have been bantied about, specifically a list that was in The Athletic this week. Sean Lewis, offensive coordinator at Colorado, had some of his power recently stripped there 
but did a fine job at Kent State. Alex Adkins, Florida State Offensive Coordinator, well, we're going to see his worth the next couple weekends without Jordan Travis as his quarterback. Jason Candle's done an outstanding job at Toledo. His MAC championship team is currently at 10-1. and Bob Chesney at Holy Cross, of course, they... Uh, gave Boston College a scare this season. He's 19-8 and eight there. Chuck Martin at Miami of Ohio has a sub-500 record all time at Miami, but you got to consider difficult non-conference games. He's 43-31 and 31 in the MAC and 9-2 and two this season. Tyson Helton producing nine win plus seasons at Western Kentucky. Jerry Kill, we just saw his team pull off an upset on the Plains at Auburn. Of course, he had an outstanding run at Minnesota, New Mexico State, currently at nine and three. Kurt Signetti, James Madison, of course, they're tearing it up right now. Finally lost a game, trying to get to a bowl game and fight the NCAA on that. He is 51 and nine at JMU. Now, Syracuse Athletic Director John Wildhack is reportedly on record as stating that he wants an experienced Power 5 head coach. So we talked about Marone. He had been at Syracuse. Here's the top of the list, the wish list, when talking about successful Power 5 coaches. It's Dan Mullen, Mississippi State, Florida. Of course, he did a fine job specifically at Florida. He knows what it's like at Mississippi State to work from a talent deficit like he would have to at Syracuse versus the rest of the ACC. And, of course, at Florida, he had that thing going before a brutal, brutal end to his tenure there as they crashed and burned in the Cotton Bowl. He made some regrettable statements about kind of disowning his team to a certain extent when they had all those opt-outs in the Cotton Bowl following 2020. And then on into a 2021 season, it was just flat-out bizarre and so the end was not pretty, but Dan Mullen, keep in mind, took over a 4-8 and eight football team and elevated them to New Year's Six Bowl games in 2018, 19, and 20 and an SEC championship game and a coming within one score of an all-time great Alabama team. Then you also have Willie Fritz at Tulane, not a Power 5 coach, but hey, you win the Cotton Bowl and beat USC. Willie Fritz uh, stabilized the Tulane program as recently as two seasons ago, two and ten. But since then, wow, twenty-one and three, ten and one this season. Lone loss was a competitive ball game against Ole Miss. So Willie Fritz, hey, he would be a good find for Syracuse football. Then there's Jimmy Chadwell, who's made a national brand out of Coastal Carolina. Moves on to Liberty, and the Flames are walla eleven and zero. Jimmy Chadwell a fine candidate for the Syracuse football team. We will have Kevin Wall on from Noon's Magician to talk more Syracuse football candidates to replace Dino Babers right here at the Voice of College Football. Leave your comments and questions down below. Of course, it's rivalry week, so you got to lock it in right here. Best discussion, debate, and analysis right here at the Voice of College Football.